Hi everyone, Dan Turner here. Today I thought I would uh, do a bit of a tour of the Class Globe 580 that I've been building for the last couple of years, uh, specifically for the Mini Globe race, which uh, essentially starts next year um, into 2025 and 26. Uh, but yeah, this is obviously a project that I've been working on uh, for a significant period of time now, and um, we're nearly at the finish line. So yeah, here we go. Uh, this video I'm doing myself, so uh, bear with me. Um, just going to move over we're going to start going through equipment that i've uh, got here so just starting at this end of the shed we've got uh got a couple of solar panels here 70 watts each the class regulations state that uh, you can have up to 200 watts so um, we've also got uh, 50 watts of solar over here uh, which will be utilized as a, a spare backup you've got to keep 50 watts downstairs uh, for emergency some of the other electrical gear that's got to go in, we've got a B&G Vulcan 7 plotter, uh, autopilot, Iridium Go uh, for the weather reports. Uh, we've got a Vespa AIS transponder over here, AIS flitter, VHF radio, um, MR transducer. Uh, that right there goes with the with the Iridium Go. It's the antenna. Um, a few other bits and pieces. Uh, back there, Echo Max uh, ActiveX dual band target enhancer. Um, hopefully, keep me safe from all the ships out there. We've got a floodlight, obviously, all the essential navigation equipment. We've also got oh, a masthead light over there, um, antenna in this one, a couple of interior lights, and then you've just got your uh, build system over here, and also um, internal fan. Uh, we've also got some other bits and pieces. You can see the uh, floating spotlight in here. We've got um, our Iridium Extreme handset, handheld VHF, uh, this Sangian uh, radio, uh, worldwide receiver, a multi band radio. Um, then we've also got your yellow bit tracker here and another G handheld GPS. Uh, what else we got that I missed? Um, over here we've got the uh, Torquedo electric engine, uh, three horsepower. Uh, it's a few years old now. It's actually my father's who's uh, uh, given that to me for the race, which is which is awesome. Um, yeah, quite expensive, so that's coming going to come in handy. Over here, a couple of uh, what do we got? We got uh, a couple of extra hatches to go in uh, the stern. I'll show you through that shortly. Uh, this is where we've just been making a bit of uh, West System epoxy, which I've used to build the boat with. Um, Echo Tech for the majority of the painting. Uh, got a mast over here, mast and boom, a bit of stainless hand railing still to go in. Uh, it's all disassembled at the moment, but we've also got the um, the um, the wind vane. This is here is a custom gimbal uh, for the cooking with a jet boil. Got to see how that works yet. Um, yeah, anchors in this bucket here. We've got the blue shark equipment that you can buy as a package so uh, that's for the deck fit out so you haven't even really looked through much of that yet but we'll, uh, we'll be getting to that shortly uh, we've got some uh, got a bit of the halyards and those sorts of things damn boy uh, another bilge pump there we've got uh, another bucket of all sorts of random bits and pieces do not clutches um, that sort of thing and uh, sea break there Burke sea break and uh, yeah, what do we got? So we've got the retrieve and float man overboard recovery system. Still got to do a few bits and pieces with the with the stainless, so um, yeah, we've still got to do pulpits and the and the bow we've got to get that on. And then um, yeah, as I said, a bit of other hand railing still to go on yet. This is obviously the the boat over here. Uh, this is most importantly in South Australia at the moment, uh, my dad's shed. So it's been good to have this hoist to be able to get the boat up and down over the last uh, half a dozen months or so. Uh, the last week we've actually been, uh, we've actually got this trailer, uh, it's a tinny trailer that we've modified to get the boat on. Um, you know, it's not, uh, it's not designed for the boat, but um, yeah, she'll get the job done and get me back to Adelaide. And then we've also done a custom sort of cradle underneath that uh, the boat's sitting on, uh, which is pretty cool. So we're just sort of finalising bits and pieces of that. There she is. At the back, we've got the the stainless uh, ladder. <clears throat> Wind vane goes on here. 
This is where the electric outboard goes on to. Um, we've got a couple of holes here. Uh, that's where the water's going to spit out through the through the cockpit. I've also got another. I've got another build another hole in here to get the water out quicker. I haven't done that yet, but that's to come. Um, a few bits and pieces over here. Rudder still to be finished off. Getting there though. Um, there she is. Come back over here. I'll take you onto the boat. It's a bit a little bit messy still. Um, just been tidying up a bit today, but uh, still got a bit to go. Uh, yeah, so here we go. Back in the cockpit. Those are the hatches I was showing earlier. I've just got to just got to enclose those. Um, yeah, boat itself. Um, marine ply, nine mil. Um, it's covered with a fiberglass. Uh, we've got about a I think it's about 450 grams a square meter on the deck. On the bottom, um, we've got about 1200 grams a square meter. Uh, so down here, um, at the back, I've actually enclosed down there, uh, right at the right at the bottom, in through there. That's actually um, filled with non-porous foam. Um, which helps. Go downstairs. All right, at the back, this is be the bunks. Uh, still got to put the foam on these. A couple of hatches here. Need to be a bit of a tidy up. Um, yeah, this is the bubble. Uh, so we'll stick up the head through here whenever the whenever I'm waking up, just to check that uh, everything's all all going good. Down here, we've got the put a bit. I put a, well, I could put a sink in here and then. Um, we're actually putting our battery systems in here. I think we've actually put a battery in here so far. So we've got a battery in here with the uh, anticipating electrics will be done shortly. Um, nav, nav table is going to go on this section here. Um, not really sure what I'm going to do with the flooring yet, but planning on just keeping this as is and then probably putting some flooring over the, these beams here. At the back, we're going to have through there the, um, the life raft, uh, which I've still got to get. Um, plot is going to latch onto that there. VHF up the top here. Through the front, we've got bow section, so this can be all closed up. So in the event that there's a got an issue at the bow, completely we can close this whole section in so it's watertight. Um, same with the companionway hatch up there. Uh, keep it safe in the in the event uh, of an emergency or um, even just a major storm to keep keep all the water out. Another forward hatch, bow up through here. So, and then we've just got some kind of some storage on each side here, right at the front. Um, that's also filled with non-porous foam. That whole bow section, um, in case uh, yeah, in case we can't get any water up there, which would be good. And what else? Uh, I think that's pretty much about it. So uh, that's that's where we're up to. So next step, get the electrics in. After that. Uh, Finish off the, the deck fittings up top and um, plumbing, all those sorts of things. So, uh, we've got the keel finished now, but we've still got to put all of that on, all the rigging, obviously. So, uh, that's got, got a little bit of, got a few things left to go, but um, yeah, as I said, nearly there now. Really looking forward to getting the boat in the water. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for following us over the last couple of years. It's, um, it's been a, a big journey to date, but um, we're just getting started. So, yeah, stay tuned. Looking forward to it. Cheers, guys.